I mean, presumably, to, just to stick with Australia for, for a second, I mean, one of the challenges, as we've seen, is that Rudd came in on quite a green agenda and in the last, what, few months has bumped into all kinds of political realities that have made life a bit harder as a, as a civil servant. You won't want to go into those in too much detail. But, I mean, that is, the, that is one of the realities, and we've seen that also with Obama, haven't we? That, you know, there's a, there's a, there are different mindsets in Congress, for example. So just to amplify that, uh, that question. Well, I just want to, can I say something about Australia, if I may, because I just uh, was there. And my carbon footprint sounds terrible, doesn't it? <laughs> but I, I, do ride my, I do ride my bicycle to my office. All right, but that, um, I, I, I lead a global organization. I was very interested to meet your relatively new environment minister, who actually was the head of an activist NGO. It's quite charismatic. And, and also charismatic and also a rock singer, which is a one, another way of passing the message. And, and, well, but, uh, you know, th I was in Melbourne, and Melbourne, the uh, state of Victoria, I think, has, has got a huge drought problem. And all of a sudden, it seemed to me that uh, I was there just on a quick personal visit, and everybody was talking about water. And I was asking them. The government went around and distributed to people these little egg timers that you're supposed to put in your shower, which I think give too much time. I, took, I used one of those. You can do it for less. But at least <laughs> people who never thought about it. So in some ways, you know, the crisis is pushing people to understand. And then we need more rock singers and sports stars to give the, give the message out. It's, it's not easy, but they're, they're, they're trying. I mean, just because a little bit more than 50% elected a government that has shows the leadership potential, you still have to convince the other 49. And sometimes things like the water crisis will help. Uh, just two aspects. One is about the take up. Is it is a take up better in high income countries or low income countries? From the footprint perspective, we don't see any difference. Actually, we have had better take up in what you would call like low income countries uh, than in high income countries because they see the bottom line much clearer. And I think the second thing is I'm a total one bottom line guy because this, as soon as you have three bottom lines, two will fall <laughs> off the table. <laughs> you, we, not, not just one number to say what, what's actually our goal. And I think our goal is we want to have great lives and as you have to f respect financial budgets, you have to respect environmental budgets. So it's not an extra burden that you have to take on. Or like gender, it's not an extra burden. Actually, the best investment we can make is in women. Not because it's nice to be nice to women, but it's because that's, that's the future of humanity. If we invest in women, we reduce violence, we increase education, we increase longevity. I mean, uh, the benefits are just stunning. And if, if we segment it as an extra burden, it's not going to happen. It's, fall off the it's going to fall off the table. So you have to be able to show how your interventions really add to the key underlying goal, which is how can we have the best lives possible, recognizing the physical realities of our world. I mean, it is one of the problems, to get back to your, your question, to set you up, Pavan, I mean, it is one of the problems, and I, I've always been struck by this, is particularly with climate change, it's environment ministers, it's environment ministries, it's environment correspondents who cover this, and particularly with this topic, you know, valuing nature differently. Actually, it shouldn't be me that does the story. It should be the business correspondent. It should be the political guy. Uh, and, and in governmental terms, it shouldn't be the official interested in the environment who's dealing with it. It should be someone from the Treasury, someone from, from some other uh, core department. Uh, and presumably, you, you, your kind of work might get more traction if you were addressing Treasuries and, and, and others. Completely, which is why I you know, burn carbon credits to travel all the way to Washington for one day to make, make that speech. But coming to your question on Australia, and uh, to some extent I think this applies to New Zealand as well. These two countries do have very good uh, flow and stock accounts for, uh, in the case of New Zealand, fresh water, in the case of Australia, also fresh water and other aspects, forests. So I, I see no reason why, uh, so long as the broad direction of accounting, of national accounting is set, and that's something that the UN has to, has to take a degree of ownership, leadership for. There's no reason why some countries should not move ahead at a faster speed in that agreed direction. And I would highly encourage countries like Australia, New Zealand, India, uh, the US, to actually consider this seriously. There's nothing lost. It's MIS, if you want to think about it. And, of course, management information system. It's additional information that you as in. Yeah, that's right. Yes, <laughs> that's right. And uh, it, it is possible now. Uh, and at the same time, I would agree when, and reinforce the point that Mathis uh, says, which is that 
you can't, uh, you, and, and indeed what David said, which is that this issue is just too important. Like I said, MDGs, all of them are beholden to the uh, availability of a decent environment. So is it environment that's the issue, or is, is it women, or is it children? There has to be a collective approach of taking all these values in and looking at, uh, in, in some cases, social return on capital, governments looking at what is the return on investment across all these capitals, social capital, human capital, natural capital. These are calculations which even countries like the UK are, are performing right now. I know from engaging them. Uh, so it is all possible. It's, it is a question of getting better information across from uh, the government to the policymakers and then from the government to the press. I'm not sure if uh, this is worth. Um, I, yeah, I was interested in your responses. I, I suppose but I'm looking at it from a more of a development perspective. Um, Julia, you mentioned um, your trip to the Pacific. Um, obviously, Australia um, and New Zealand and others, um, but Australia takes a leadership role as a donor in the Pacific region, for example. So at the moment, we, we have many projects with the Pacific governments, um, many development-related projects, possibly projects related to infrastructure. Now, at this point, they would take into account rights-based approach, well, to some extent. I mean, our government has, has, has considering that. More widely, governments accept that there should be some sort of human rights-based approach to development. So when they go and build a dam somewhere, they have to look at what the human rights impacts are on, 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 the, or on, the, human, on the population. Um, they don't currently, as far as I'm aware, um, there's no mainstreaming of an environment approach. So they don't take into account what the environmental impacts of their development projects that's, at this point in time, my understanding is that's not been mainstreamed out throughout the UN and it's not widely accepted by all donors. Um, now, I don't know whether my government would, would relish such an approach because it adds a layer of complexity, but it's certainly something that, that um, could be looked at in terms of getting your message out. I think in Britain, I think there is usually an environment, environmental impact statement before a project is. I don't know if anyone's here can guide me on that, but, but it, it doesn't go as deeply into the question as we've been discussing this morning. It's much more, you know, that forest is going to go, that valley is going to be flooded. It doesn't really look into the cost. Yeah. And it's not a system. It's not a system. No, no, no. Um, two quick stories. One about Australia. South Australia, for example, has officially a strategic plan to reduce its ecological footprint 30% by 2020 or something. But the funny thing is, even though they have lost in some areas of South Australia with the drought, 80% of the uh, wine harvest or the, the grape harvest just because of the drought, in the administration there are people adamantly trying to undermine looking at the footprint. They don't want to do it, just for ideological reasons. They think, what's in the interest of the government not to know how your buying capacity is doing, how your demand of buying capacity is doing, if that's your key asset. What's, I mean, that's undermining the fiduciary responsibility of the administration, and these people need to be, be fired, I think. I mean, in some ways, it's not, I mean, to the guts question again, I think, they're, they're, you're not supporting your basic interest in, in, in fiduciary responsibility in, in, this, in this case. I think the, the case is actually quite clear why, why we need to do that. Um, in terms of human development, one thing that we're trying to promote as, as a way of basically equalizing all product, projects is to, to use this little diagram that we have on the folder of saying what we really want is to have high human development but there's their ecological constraints, how much budget is there per nature so that we can start to compare any project, be it a dam or investing in women or in a school against each other and say how much movement are we generating per dollar investment towards this, the goal of sustainable development. So it becomes kind of a sustainable development return on investment metrics that you can, can you start to see, are we really moving countries into the direction that they need to go to make development last, or do you undermine its possibility by just making them more fragile?